The walking, so leash reactivity, blowing up at other dogs. Is that other what's dogs, and like if a car comes around the corner and surprises and them. Just fearful. He'll jump. Yeah. Like my, my goal is to hopefully be able to like so socialize them more because now I can't take him to like parks and stuff, you know what I mean? And I mean, he doesn't like react all the time. It's just he's so big. I don't know if they get bored of just walking with me. No, they don't get bored of just walking with you. Okay. It's awesome to just walk with you. <laughs> like, let's say you take them to like a, a market, like a farmer's market or something. Like there's so much going on. Yeah. That is like great socialization. Like after, you know, a few bad experiences and stuff, then they just would avoid things that are like, would make him nervous and might cause problems. So I just need to slowly, you know, reintroduce him to so you're slowly introducing him. You're going to be doing that with like a lot of leadership and we're going to do that with the collars and the training. In his mind, he's like leading you and you're behind right. him. Yeah, yeah. So that's what we want to work on. And, and so with this truck, would he get jumpy about this? Not always. Not always, yeah. He, he, could, he could have and then he didn't. So he looks a little concerned. Maybe it's not uh, coming through right now so much. Yeah, it's, I mean, okay. it's, not, it's not always, but I think it's... Okay. So this was a really interesting case because Ozzy had a demeanor that seemed pretty laid back all around, even when I was assessing him. Um, and I, as I started to work with him too, he was like super responsive. He was following my leadership really softly and easily. Um, but then I experienced what his owner was struggling with when he saw another dog um, on our walk and he blew up. And this was um, an 85 pound Great Dane lab mix. So really strong guy. Um, and of course, when you have them on a tighter leash, you're, it's more of a safety risk. Um, because they can like redirect on you essentially, which is like all this aggression stuff coming out and you're the closest one next to them. So that's where um, muzzling up a dog like this is super important, even though, um, you know, he's pretty safe inside the house, but like when he gets triggered with that leash reactivity stuff, you just never know it's gonna come out. I mean, it's up to you. If you want him back further, you can get him back a little further. Yeah, that's, a good that's yeah, right there. And I just like staying on that when he starts to creep. They're always gonna like creep a little bit until they really start to get into a groove with you. Good. Oh so, yeah, it's an 11. Let's try that if he sees a new dog or something. So I'll give him some information back there. So as soon as he starts to perk and go into that scanning, you just get him back into that submissive spot. It's all about like the spot that he's supposed to stay in. Good. I can do this all day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like just working him, like doing drills, okay. slowly can bring that arousal down okay. and bring up his mental engagement. Okay, good. Okay, great. Perfect. I love you, it's like we're cuddling. <laughs> but it also shows like this is actually the fear underneath that aggression, reactivity. Sure. So it shows how, in how insecure he actually is for oh. him to be hugging up against you, right? So but that's a better coping skill than that. So I'll yeah. take that, that's great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good job. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yes. I love you. Great. But you're absolutely right of like playing with the threshold. Like how close do I get to this dog? Right where like we maybe you don't have to correct him and you can just work him and he kind of sees this dog in his peripheral vision mm -hmm. and that's like flooding him essentially like getting him exposed to all the stuff and like he's working on mental new mental patterns of like basically not flipping out okay so let's let's go this way because this guy's freaking out so before he starts to get uncomfortable. I mean, that dog's so small, I don't know if he would actually get, would he get 
He would have, okay. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Besides, it's just another creature. Yeah. It's like we don't want to overwhelm him too much right now. He's doing really great. So, so and you're also his protector, right? So, dog barking, let's go this way. So, um, before working with Ren, it was scary to walk my dog. I couldn't mean I couldn't trust anybody else to walk him. I'm scared to leave to ask a friend to like watch my dogs for me. Um, and now after just three sessions, we walked this close to a mailman and his truck and he did nothing. You guys, that has never happened in five years. So I'm seeing huge progress and it's all because of the tools that Ren gave me and how she taught me how to handle my dog and how to be a leader, which I had no idea about before. So I'm really, really excited for the future of my dogs with me. Life is gonna be so much easier now that they can follow me. Awesome, thank you so much.